I am going to take you for a tour. So come uh, join me on this tour, uh, guided by Dr. Daniel Gorelick, the core director and associate professor of molecular and cell biology, and the operations manager, Lauren Marie Pendolfo. We're going to have some fun looking at a bunch of fish, so come on. My name is Lauren Pandolfo and I am the technical director of the Zebrafish Genetics Corps here at Baylor College of Medicine. And our lab provides specialized expertise and equipment for essential zebrafish research services. We assist with generation of transgenic and mutant zebrafish, chemical and genetic screening so that we can model human development and diseases of interest, fluorescent microscopy of embryos and larvae, behavioral research, small molecule and drug exposure experiments, and even more. And our core can also assist users in training to utilize zebrafish for experiments. So if you don't know how, we can teach you. The Zebrafish Genetics Corps operates in this brand new state-of-the-art zebrafish animal facility which was built over the past three years and is operated by the Center for Comparative Medicine Animal Care Program. This facility currently houses zebrafish for six PIs including the core lab and the facility has a capacity for over 2,000 holding tanks and can hold a colony of 30 to 40,000 animals. And you may be wondering how did a little tropical fish that you can buy in a pet store join the ranks of species that can help answer questions about human health and diseases? Zebrafish research started in the early 1960s when researcher Dr. George Streisinger at the University of Oregon turned to his home aquarium hobby to provide a new vertebrate model organism. These fish are easy to care for and they are a hardy tropical species. They're originally found in the Ganges River Basin in India and they thrive in captivity. And when we keep them in an ideal summer monsoon environment, these fish readily breed weekly, providing large clutches of embryos. The animals here at Baylor are kept in a balmy 82 degrees Fahrenheit with a high humidity environment and an abundance of feeding opportunities. And they love it. They thank us by typically providing us with over 500 embryos per breeding pair per week for a breeding life of about two years per animal for all of our research needs. On the surface, it might seem that we humans don't have much in common with fish, but dig a little deeper and things get interesting. About 70% of human genes are present in zebrafish. So for example, sometimes humans are born with a genetic mutation that causes a congenital anomaly or a disease. In many cases, if you mutate the same gene in zebrafish, you will see the same uh, anomaly or disease symptom in the zebrafish. So even though zebrafish breathe oxygen from water and they have gills and not lungs, you know, the embryos need to grow and develop the same way that, that we do. We both need to form livers and digestive tracts and hearts. And fundamentally, the growth and development of a human liver is often more similar to the way a fish liver develops than it is different. Zebrafish have several advantages as a research tool. The embryos are transparent, they develop in water outside of the mother, and they develop rapidly. The first 24 hours in the life of a zebrafish embryo is roughly equivalent to the first 10 or so weeks of human development. This means we can watch zebrafish embryos develop. Uh, we can see organs and tissues like the heart, the liver, or the brain, we can watch them develop and form in real time in a day. By three days, the zebrafish can swim and begin to exhibit complex behaviors like reacting to stimuli. They swim away rapidly if you startle them, if you surprise them. And so scientists can not only study how cells and tissues form in the embryo, but they can also study how some behaviors form. That's difficult or impossible to do in other animals like rodents. So this is our central control panel where we can control and set and adjust any of the conditions that we need for the environment so that the animals themselves never lose any of their ability to enjoy a pristine, perfect environment, even if we have to do service or maintenance to any of the equipment. This is our storage containment for the reverse osmosis filtered water. It's very important that we are able to protect, create, and maintain our systems. And with this water storage, we can make sure that our fish are happy and functioning for seven to 10 days 
even if we can't get fresh water from the city. Uh, the Zebrafish Research Corps can be found on the Baylor College of Medicine Research ATC Core Labs page and can easily be reached via our core email atc-zebrafish at bcm.edu.